The forces of nature have been venerated and associated with countless deities throughout the ages. Although not the oldest by any stretch of the imagination, there is a deity who is quite well known as a king of kings and a symbol for the sun. Today, I ask the question, who is Ra? Ra was an Egyptian deity of the sun, its shining light, and a supreme force within Egyptian cosmology. Various gods in Egypt have been attributed to the sun, but Ra was the foremost of them all. He was king of the gods and is said to be a father figure within the process of creation, including being the creator of mankind from the tears of his joy. Not only was he said to govern the actions of the sun, but he could be considered the sun itself, not to mention the day. Ra is said to have either birthed himself directly from the goddess Noon, who represented the primordial void. She was an infinite sea without thinking or knowing. In that version, a spark of light took form within Noon. That spark became Ra, who then willed himself into being. Another version says that the god Amun is the one who came into existence, along with Ptah, the god of crafts, and the two created an egg that floated within Noon. From this egg, Ra was said to have been born. The most general form of Ra was a man with a falcon's head, a solar disk as a crown, and a serpent coiled around that disk who was named Uraeus. Often depicted as a powerful king with a sun disk on his head, Ra took many forms and many names within his role. When Ra appeared with his head as a beetle, he was called Kefer, the one who comes into being. He was at different times mixed or combined with other deities, such as Amun-Ra, which when mixed with the unknowable creator deity Amun, he becomes the hidden sun and Ra universal power. There were even other fusions, such as Kunum-Ra and Sobek-Ra. When Ra is mixed with Horus at the dawn in the east, he is Horakahuti, or Horus of the horizon. By midday, he will return to being Ra, as when sundown approached, he would become Atum and prepare for his journey through the underworld. Anything that has a beginning has an end, and Ra is no exception to that. There is a tale of Ra in his very old age, where a move is made to take his power by the goddess Isis, queen of the underworld. The god Ra had a secret name. That was the handle for his power. A name he told to no one. That's what made it secret. The goddess Isis knew that this was the case and sought to covet that power herself by making a move to get Ra to tell her that secret name himself. She wanted to rule the earth jointly with Ra and thought herself fit to do so. Ra, being old and decrepit with his age, would at times be caught drooling and dribbling at the mouth like a baby, and this spittle would fall down from the sky. Him at this point having very little to no control over his body in his aged state. Ra had many different names, but it was this secret name that would give power to anyone that used it. This being the case, Isis decided to use Ra's old age and weakened state against him. Isis collected some earth and mixed it with the falling spittle of Ra to form of her hands a serpent. Using her powers, she brought the serpent to life and placed the creature in hiding along the path that Ra traveled daily. Generally, Ra would have been immune to a snake's bite, but this snake was not only made by Isis herself, but its venom was made from Ra's own essence. A short while later, Ra did most certainly come along with his regal retinue of gods and servants. This is when the crafted serpent leapt out from its hiding place and bit Ra on the leg. As the serpent's venom flowed through his veins, Ra cried out in pain. All of the gods gathered around him and asked what was the matter. 
Ra, however, was both losing his faculties from age and was gripped by the magic venom. The poison had flooded all of his members, just as the Nile during inundation floods all the lands of Egypt. When finally able to speak, Ra did most certainly inform the gods of what had happened. Ah, I have been wounded by some deadly thing that I did not make, nor did I see. He commanded the other gods to cure him with their spells, but none could succeed. None of them, that is, except for Isis. In exchange for her healing, Isis demanded that Ra tell her his secret name. At first, the sun god attempted to instead give the goddess his various other names by boasting his accomplishments and telling her riddles. Isis, however, did not budge. The pain that Ra experienced became even greater, and still, she insisted on having the secret name of Ra. Ugh. I will allow myself to be searched through by Isis, and will let my name come out from my body and pass into her body, said Ra, finally. The two hid themselves from the other gods, and Isis, along with her son Horus, began the process of seeking out the secret name. Isis went into Ra's body and not only healed him, but absorbed his power for herself. There are even tales that say that after Isis had healed Ra, she then asked for an additional wish, that her son Horus would one day be the king, and that Ra give to that boy both of his eyes, the sun and the moon. By the dynastic period of Egypt, Ra had become associated very closely with the mortal kingship of the pharaohs. And yes, yes, I know pharaoh is a Greek term, but roll with me for a minute, please. The rulers of the fourth dynasty would in fact call themselves sons of Ra, and this was to be included in their names. Some of the earlier temples to Ra do not contain statues of the deity, but instead focus on allowing rays of sunlight to flood the temple, prioritizing the physical form of the deity as opposed to some image of it in stone. 